can a virtual meeting do when you are in the middle of a pandemic? There's a deep sense of loss that I feel, and when I stop long enough to pay attention, I know it's on my mind, it's my soul. But what I'm comforted by is Jesus wants you and me to bring losses to Him. And if we kill our expectations in this time and raise expectancy, would we be able to perceive what God might be doing in the midst of the pandemic and see potentially that God is still on the move? Like David, let's trust in God's unfailing love. Let us sing the Lord's praise because God has been good to us. My heart longs for revival. And how does it start? It starts with you and me, locked in our rooms, crying out to God, saying, God, start with me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another InterVarsity Live. InterVarsity is a national college ministry. We strive to see our university communities come into a life-changing, world-altering relationship with Jesus. We in InterVarsity believe that God is still at work, bringing a season of revival, of new life to the world, a breakthrough of God's kingdom here on earth. InterVarsity, along with other college ministries, churches, and alumni, believe that God is calling us to reach every corner of every campus with the good news of Jesus, even when we aren't physically present. My name is Allison Smith, and I am your MC for InterVarsity Live. I am so grateful to minister with Greek InterVarsity, our national ministry for fraternity and sorority students. I am passionate about InterVarsity's commitment to reach every corner of every campus. InterVarsity Live is one way that InterVarsity is following God's calling to reach students and faculty, even when we aren't physically together. This week, many of our colleges and universities are wrapping up their terms. For our seniors, you are keenly aware that you should be celebrating your graduation this week. And you're probably feeling a mix of emotions, joy and satisfaction that you made it, you did it, you have a degree, but you know, also sadness and, and maybe some anger and grief over the loss of how you thought college would end. Even though it's been six weeks since our campuses have shut down, we are still reminded daily of the losses we've experienced. It's confusing to know how to navigate both the joy and the pain. How do we hold both our joy and our grieving? Two InterVarsity staff, Daniela and Frank Espinoza, have learned about holding joy and grief at the same time. Frank and Daniela were planning to get married in June of this year. They had a venue booked and family and friends from all over the world were planning to come to Texas to join them at their wedding. And then as we know, COVID-19 changed everything. Daniela and Frank faced a difficult choice. They knew they had to cancel their wedding in June, but would they hold off and plan their wedding for December, six months later than they planned? Or would they consider moving their wedding date up? They prayed and sensed that God was calling them to marry now even though that meant letting go of all they imagined for their day, the hardest of which would be not having their friends and family present. On Easter Sunday, just a few weekends ago, Daniela and Frank got married. I love what Daniela wrote on social media. She said this, in the midst of so much, God's resounding and perpetual yes was clear to us. With abundant joy in one hand and tremendous lament in the other, Frank and I responded to God's invitation to change our wedding plans and get married on Easter Sunday. Congratulations, Daniela and Frank. We are in our final week of our series, What the World Needs Now, exploring joy in a time of grief. We are tempted to keep these two seemingly opposite postures far from each other. But I believe that God is inviting us to hold them together, trusting that he will help us grieve well, even as we are maybe holding joy, on the other hand. 
As members of the body of Christ, scripture calls us to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. I wanna acknowledge that many of us in our community are grieving right now. We have a special word from Greg Howe this evening to help our InterVarsity family grieve together and to care for one another. Hi, a few weeks ago at InterVarsity Live, I spoke on finding beauty in times of pain and suffering. And one of the things that I said is that Jesus calls us to run toward the world's pain rather than run away from it. And that when we're there in the midst of that pain, we cry out. We cry out against injustice and sin and the pain that's caused by those. We cry out against problems that seem intractable and impossible to solve. We cry out in solidarity with those who are experiencing deep pain. Well, this past week, the African-American and African diaspora community has been experiencing deep pain as the story of Ahmad Arbery has gone viral. His death resonates with historic acts of violence and injustice that reach back 400 years. And his pain is compounded, I suspect, by the ways that the African-American community has been disproportionately affected by COVID deaths. In part, it reflects decades of intentional underinvestment in their neighborhoods, in their health, and their economic well-being. Now, because all of us experience some level of pain from COVID-19, whether the deferred dreams that we're experiencing or economic crises at home, it'd be easy to shy away from that pain, but please don't. Because I think Jesus has an invitation for us. He's inviting us to enter into that pain. He's inviting us to cry out and to act in ways which demonstrate that he is at work in the world. And he invites us to pray with him and with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit groans, as was described in Romans 8. So would you join with me in prayer right now? Lord, we cry out. With our African-American and African diaspora sisters and brothers, we cry out, how long, O oh Lord? We cry out with millions of families that have lost loved ones, beginning with the slave trade all the way until the present moment. We cry out with churches bearing a dozen or more of their senior saints because of COVID-19. We cry out with mothers and fathers who worry for their children's safety every single time they go out. We cry out for every black Christian who wonders if they can bear this pain any longer. We cry out with them, come Lord Jesus, and bring your kingdom of grace and justice in its fullness. Lord, I cry out as a Chinese American to ask your forgiveness for the ways that my community all too often shares in the racialized prejudices that bring pain and suffering to the black community, even when we're experiencing racialized prejudice ourselves. We cry out, Lord have mercy. Lord reveal your holiness and your justice through us. Lord, please have mercy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Greg. Lord, have mercy. Yes. May we be people who mourn with those who mourn and who cry out against injustice. This evening, I want to be open to the places that God is inviting me to grieve and also to be open to how he wants to give me joy and hope this evening. And I am hoping that you are willing to, that you are willing to be open to ways that God might be inviting you to grieve, but also how God might be inviting you to experience his hope and joy. Musical worship is a way that God helps us to process our lament and our joy. I grew up in a church that sang hymns, which I still love today. Hymns offer depth to both my joy and lament with their rich language and their beautiful melodies. But when I was in fifth grade, I went to a church camp where I was one of five white kids. All of the counselors and the staff were African-American. My time at Judson Collins camp was one of the greatest gifts I've ever received from the Lord, and I still think about it today. I'll never forget the deep love and compassion that Dean Hayes and Dean Donna showed me and the other campers. And during musical worship, it was the first time I ever sang gospel songs. Singing the chorus of the songs over and over allowed my spirit to join with the other campers and to join in with the spirit of God in a way that I had never experienced before. 
As we sang about our sins, we were united in our grieving, even though we came from very different backgrounds. And as we sang songs of joy, our collective praise seemed to lift us higher into God's presence together. Worshiping in diverse community reminds me and reminds us that we are never alone in our sorrow or our joy. As we move into musical worship, I invite you to be open to how God might want you to experience lament and joy this evening in your own heart language and perhaps through the languages and cultures that are different from your own. Hey, University Lee on the worship team are so excited to lead you in a few songs of praise and worship momentarily. But first, I wanted to let you know who's on the team. I'm coming to you from Central Florida, from the Orlando area. From San Diego, we've got Eric Lige on vocals. Also from San Diego, we've got a mother-daughter duel, Tanika Wyatt and her daughter, Jordan. Tanika was on the Urbana worship team, as was Eric and myself. And then we've got very special guests coming to us from Johannesburg, South Africa. From Faith Hill Church in Johannesburg, we've got Marshall Sibanda on keys and Josiah Musuwo on drums. Marshall is also the uh, worship leader, worship director at Faith Hill Church, where Eric and I had an opportunity to visit last fall and enjoy musical worship through the lens of our South African brothers and sisters. So you're going to feel that tonight's worship set's going to have a little taste of South Africa coming to you, especially in the second song called Siabonga. Siabonga was written by South African worship leader Loiso Bala, and it means thank you in the Zulu language. Siabonga. I'd like to read to you two verses coming out of Psalm 100. Here it goes. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And this week's theme for InterVarsity Live is joy in a time of grief. Seems like a paradox, doesn't it? How can you experience joy when things are tough, when you're grieving, when you're lamenting? And this is not to minimize the pain that many of us are going through because of the global pandemic. But it is to say that for those of us who trust in Jesus, in the midst of our pain, we experience joy, which is a fruit of the Spirit. And it's a quiet confidence that our God is in control. That He is moment by moment working all things to His preferred ending and our good. And one day, we won't cry anymore. One day, pain and injustice will cease. Sickness and disease will be no more. Because the Lamb of God is in control. Amen. The Father, Son, and Spirit is in control, and we will be with Him forever. But until then, we can be encouraged knowing that we're not left alone, that He is Emmanuel, God with us, and He will empower us through these tough times to be joyful, to have hope. And so, let's get ready to sing. This is Amazing Grace. Siabonga. Thank you. Here we go.
I call you first, I call you last, I call you everything that you are. You are the one who gives to all more than we could ever ask. You are love, beautiful love that never fails me. You restore all things to you, perfect and true. That's why I sing. Bonga 
Messi ya bonga. I love how this evening we were able to include artists from all over the world and a mother daughter pair. How cool is that? <laughs> it really helps me to remember that I'm part of a global family of God. Worshiping God in languages and songs that are different from our own cultural background is a way that we experience a depth and richness of God's presence that we could not experience if we only sang in our own language with our own cultural and ethnic groups. Thank you so much, Amir and Eric, for your leadership. We are so blessed by you. Friends, once again, members of the worship team will be live on Instagram at 10 p.m. Eastern. So make sure to follow InterVarsity USA and join the conversation. Information on all our songs and singles will be on the show page. So make sure to check out the show page in the show notes after tonight's program. At InterVarsity Live, we want to hear how God is at work in your community. Tonight, we have a story from Nurses Christian Fellowship, InterVarsity's focused ministry for nursing students and faculty. Hey, InterVarsity Live. My name is Bethany, and I'm on staff with InterVarsity's Nurses Christian Fellowship in Virginia. And this is one of my awesome students, Kelly. Hey, everyone. Like Bethany said, my name is Kelly. I'm a senior at Virginia Commonwealth University and a small group leader with Nurses Christian Fellowship. Yeah, so Kelly. Can you tell everyone a little bit about how COVID-19 has impacted your life as a nursing student? Yeah, there's lots of uncertainty and unknowns, same as everybody else. Um, ours particularly surrounds our clinical hours. Um, as nursing students, you have so many hours that you need to be in the hospital, taking care of patients and want to be doing so. And with the COVID pan pandemic going on, um, hospitals are just more strict as to who's allowed in and out of their facilities. Um, also, just grieving the loss of the traditional um, nursing school experience, not being able to be in person with your fellow classmates and patients, and I'm a senior, so having graduation look a lot different than was expected has been kind of a, a loss in a sense, um, just because it's being a nursing student is something that's idolized so much. We put so much time and energy into the work we're doing. Um, and the studying and the caring for other people, that it takes a big part of our, um, like a big part of our thoughts like are around nursing. And it can easily become an idol if you don't really watch it. And so that's been hard to like kind of lose that um, aspect of our identity in a sense. Yeah, what has it been like to process through having those things kind of stripped away from you during this time? Mm -hmm. Um, luckily, technology is awesome, and, and we've been able to have small groups over Zoom, so that's been really fun. One of the small groups that comes to mind particularly is when we studied Mark 4, talking about Jesus calming a storm, where the waves and the wind and the weather are just going crazy, and the disciples are really not sure what's going on and scared, and um, Jesus just commands everything to be still, and it is. And we were talking about, as a small group, how it kind of feels like we're just being called to be still right now rather than to feel stuck, um, which is revolutionary for a lot of nursing students because we're so often on the go and just moving around and find ourselves so busy caring for other people that we don't often really take the time to just um, be cared for ourselves and rest in the Lord and our identity in Him. Yeah, I mean, that's some great things to be learning <laughs> uh, during this crazy time. Uh, you mentioned Zoom small groups. Um, how else has ministry looked as a small group leader for InterVarsity? Mm -hmm. With nursing, it's been really um, unique because a lot of the students in small group also work at the hospital. And so having the opportunity to just see them even while during quarantine, um, working on the same floors together or just um, in the hallways passing each other, um, it's just been a really unique opportunity to just get to catch up and love and serve one another and the patients that we're seeing while we're at the hospital. Um, and it's just, yeah, just being called to be present in those moments, no matter like how long it is, or if it's just a few quick seconds to check in has been um, really great to just be able to see them in person. Um, yeah. I mean, I totally agree with you. Um, along with working for InterVarsity, I'm also a nurse full time and I actually work with Kelly. Um, on the same unit and it's been awesome getting to see 
other NCF students around the hospital, working with Kelly, working with others. Um, it's been pretty stressful overall, I'd say, for all of us that are there working in that environment. Um, but I think we've really been able to encourage each other well and encourage our fellow coworkers and uh, try to center each other around the Lord during this time. So that's been honestly like Kelly with you guys seeing you has been one of the biggest bright spots in the midst of all this craziness um, for me. Uh, one last question for you. What would you say to any students watching in InterVarsity who are in caregiving roles and want to give that to the Lord? Yeah, um, just talking to the Lord and seeing what he has planned for you with those opportunities. Um, I think we're just really asked to just show up and be present and to love the patients and the people that are in front of us the way Jesus would. Um, they're all his children and all bear his identity um, as well as us. And so just having that realization that um, there's someone that he takes great pride and joy in and we should too, and especially in the way we care for them. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, Kelly. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing about how it's been for you. Um, congrats on graduation. I think that was supposed to be today, right? Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully you're getting to celebrate in some kind of way, even if it's not normal. Um, yeah, and thanks for all you do. Yeah, thanks so much, Bethany. Any new grads in the house? Hey, we want to commission you to send you out into the world as ambassadors for God's kingdom. As you saw in the video, InterVarsity is hosting a special event on May 30th to honor you, celebrate you, and send you out into life after college. You can also invite your family and loved ones to attend as well so that they can join in the celebration of your witness through InterVarsity. More information will be coming out soon, so make sure that you're following InterVarsity USA on Facebook and Instagram. In the midst of our grieving and our joy, we need community. Through community, we find the compassion and empathy we need to process our losses and to heal from our pain. And being part of a community helps us to recognize God's presence when we might otherwise miss it. There have been countless times in my life where friends have helped me to see God's joy, healing, hope, and goodness when I couldn't see it myself. So I think it's time to bring out the quarantine queen. As your quarantine queen, my job is to help you thrive during the season of social distance. If you're longing for a community that will help you to process the pain and help you to see God's power and joy, listen up because I have several opportunities for you. First up, InterVarsity is hosting another national student workshop all about helping you to coach other students. Christian leaders are called to pass on what we know to a new generation. This workshop will help you learn the skills you need to invite others into leadership. Next up, any international students joining us? Woo! Interna international Student Ministries uh, is hosting this week a night of worship, community, games, prayer, and more. Lisa Espinelli Chin, who, guys, she's amazing will be leading a conversation on our theme of joy in the midst of grief. So make sure that you check that out. And then after tonight's InterVarsity Live, there are once again several excellent breakouts you can join. This evening, we'll be hosting three breakouts. A breakout for anyone who has made a first-time decision to follow Jesus, a breakout for our alumni, and then a prayer breakout. So make sure that you check those out. All of this information will be on our show page and in our show notes. This evening, as we explore the topic of joy in the midst of grief, I am delighted to welcome Serene Neddenrip. 
if you've ever seen a picture of Serene or met her in person, she just seems to exude warmth and peace. You can relax when you are in Serene's presence. As a student in college, Serene came to faith in Christ through InterVarsity. She then went on to serve as a leader in her chapter, and then she started InterVarsity at several schools after she graduated. Serene serves InterVarsity nationally as an expert in chapter planting, and she even co-wrote a book on chapter planting called Start Something New. Hey, Serene, welcome to InterVarsity Live. I'm listening. Oh, okay. I can't hear you, Serene. Oh, so. glad to be here. Fabulous. I'm glad Hi. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Serene, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. It's a perfect good. day in San Diego. Oh my gosh, that sounds lovely. Well, Serene, I understand that you studied art history in college. I would mm -hmm. love to hear, how has your love for Jesus intersected your love for art? Well, actually the semester that I surrendered my life to Jesus was the same as semester that I switched my major from pre-med chemistry to art history and criticism. So just to be clear, I don't do any art, but I can write about it and read about it and I love it. But um, the first class I took, the, I was a brand new Christian and a brand new art history major. I was taking an undergrad course on narratives in the Old Testament. And so I was learning about Jesus. I was reading the Bible in class and I was learning about Jesus and reading the Bible in my personal life. And it was just a really, really rich intersection that still they're hard to separate. They just can't come mm -hmm. apart in me. Um, when I read the Bible, I can see it, like how it unfolds visually. And when I look at art, I can see um, how God rejoices in creating new things. Mm, I love that. I love the way that you know God really does, I mean, insert himself into the things that we're passionate about. That's really yeah. amazing. Well, Serene, I would love to pray for us and pray for you so that we can uh, prepare ourselves to hear what God has to say uh, through you. So let me pray for us. Thanks. Lord, thank you for bringing us together this evening. Um, we're entering in a lot of different postures and you see that and you know that. Um, and I pray that however we find ourselves this evening, that we would be open to what you want to speak to us, um, that we would be sensitive to what your Holy Spirit is up to, and that we would respond to the invitations that you give us through Serene. Um, and I pray as Serene shares that, that she would speak uh, your words, um, that she would know that you are with her um, and that, that you are speaking through her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. How have you been handling the loss and the grief and the emotion of the time that we're in? When did it really hit home for you that the changes in our world because of the pandemic aren't actually temporary, but they're changing our world forever? And when did you first realize that you were grieving? I think for some of us, carrying grief is something that you're familiar and intimate with already. And the pandemic is just compounding your pain and the pain of your community. And um, this week with Ahmaud Arbery's life being violently taken and all of us coming to terms with that, I think we're reminded of the magnitude of grief that communities of color carry all the time. And that everyone might be familiar with different levels of grief and we all deal with it in different ways. For me, during the first month of shutdown, I knew I was grieving because I was sleeping a lot, um, which is hard when you have children. Um, but I, I knew it was a sign of grief because it, there were these emotions that I couldn't process just by thinking about them or talking about them. They were too intense to face head on. And so they, I, my body like physically processes by making me sleep more. And then in the second month, I didn't need as much sleep. I guess I got enough. And I started being, because I was awake more, I was also facing all the emotions, all the losses, and they started to pile up as I thought about them and prayed about them. Um, the loss to my personal lifestyle, I mean, that, it's a pretty big change to stay at home all the time. And the loss of experiences, trips, travel plans, gatherings, being able to be with 
family. There were missed opportunities, things I should have done before the shutdown, people I, I was in the middle of reaching out to and I didn't follow through on. And so that's kind of weighed on me. Um, I also have some grief over friends' losses, a friend who was just on the verge of a breakout career in theater and got her dream role. And, um, and when all the shows were indefinitely canceled, um, her career, her breakout career was, you know, when is that gonna start up again? And then also, I, I think um, people who are graduating into a really uncertain field, financial hardship, all of these were starting to weigh on me. I was taking them all on, sifting through them, looking at them. The sheer loss of life from the pandemic on top of that. So the ones I understood, the stuff near me, but also the sheer loss of life with the daily updates of deaths and um, the image of the mass graves in New York really hit me pretty hard. Um, knowing people who personally had multiple family members die from COVID and um, participating with them and praying that their lives would be spared and then them, for them not to be. Um, all of those piled into my grief. And then I think in just the last couple of days, it's just taken on a new level of grief um, with the news of Arbery's killing. And I don't always know how to enter into these deeper places of grief over systemic injustice and racism. I'm not always sure of my place in it. And even though I've opted in again and again, and I've learned and prayed with and walked with um, people from communities that aren't mine, I still feel out of depth, out of my depth. And um, But when I do that, and I feel overwhelmed by the magnitude of systemic evils, um, I connect um, when I pray those things, there's this one prayer that I tend to pray. It's um, Psalm 85. Won't you revive us again so your people can rejoice in you? Or the song that updates the language, revive me, revive me with the joy that you bring. Revive me with the joy that you bring. And so as I was connecting with the world's grief, my own small griefs, the griefs I know about, and just communal griefs, I found myself praying these desperate lines, God, this is an impossible time. The only way is breakthrough. Make things new again. Breakthrough, give us joy. And so as I unpacked these layers, I encountered this joy, which is crazy because I'm not happier. So this is a little hard to explain because I'm not up about it. I'm still overwhelmed with sadness, but it's more like by digging down to the bottom of the piles of grief, uh, I found at the bottom a foundation that, um, of joy in the unchanging character of God. Hebrews 13 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And the joy that I found at the bottom started to grow and it grew into this anthem that just sort of fills my headspace. Great grief, but also this anthem, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. It's solid and I can't shake it, and it resounds over and over and over again. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he was also sent by the Father into a world that looks just like this. Something about that's just solid for me. Our world is full of political unrest, just like the one Jesus sent, was sent into. Also, not much has changed in massive inequalities, systemic injustice, normalized violence, human life being cheap and expendable, uncurable, contagious diseases, oppressed and enslaved people. Our world hasn't changed that much since Jesus came. And Jesus' sentness was a core identity for him that kept, helped him navigate all of that internally and externally. He would face insults, rejections, um, he would face violence on his own body, and he still knew who he was. And he, the thing he would lean back on, the thing that steered him was, I'm sent by the Father. I know who I am, and I know the sender. I was sent by the Father. And I know what I was sent for, to preach good news. In Hebrews 12, it says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. That's crazy. That's magnificent. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He took on the grief of the world. That's where you really see joy and grief at its very fullest, embodied in Jesus on the cross. 
His greatest joy was to take on our pain, suffering, and death. On the cross, we see all the joy of Jesus' life, all of his love for you and for me and all of his children, all of, his, um, all of the precious people that he made, all the grief of the world, though, is there too, all the suffering of humanity, all in his body. And in his death, he was making new life. Jesus, in Jesus' unchangingness, it meant that on the cross, with both joy and grief there, uh, the work being done was to, to bring all of those into himself and then to defeat the evil, defeat sin and death. And when he rose again, it means the work on the cross applies to all the grief of all of history. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So yesterday, in history, the cross applies Today, the moment we're in right now, the injustice that weighs on you, the heaviest at this very moment, the cross applies to that too. Jesus embodies that. And all of the future, all the joys and griefs of our future, anything we could face and all the redemption Jesus is going to bring is going to be caught up on the cross as well. And so in our time, the way that we live is that we're sent to embody this good news, just like Jesus. He says, as the Father sends me, so I send you. And then he breathes on them and fills them with the Holy Spirit. He sends us just like he was sent, embodied, full of both joy and grief. So it might feel like a distant reality that you're sent. Since you're home, you might just feel stuck. And when you are on campus as an university student leader or a Maybe alumni, when you go to work, before COVID, you were part of communities, family, families, friend groups. You were helping people encounter Jesus. You were, um, you were just kind of knowing that you were sent. Do you remember what that feeling was? I, you knew that you were sent and you would show up and you'd be like, I'm here and I'm embodying Jesus, good news. But you're still sent, even though you're not on campus. You're still sent even though you can't go to work physically. And you're still sent even though you have to stay six feet away from people. And do you remember that feeling of how you were sent into your neighborhood or your city? And you knew the Holy Spirit was working within you to take down and uproot evil. You're still sent. You can do that on your knees through prayer. Do you remember the joy God gave you? the boldness of the Holy Spirit in you, that feeling of doing things that you didn't know how to do on your own strength as you invited people to encounter Jesus, as you did the work of the gospel, that same sentness Jesus carried as his identity that wasn't changed by any situation that embodied pain and redemption, that's our sentness. Your context has changed. Do not be fooled. Maybe the only people you interact with are your family or your roommates or that neighbor from across the street, and all you'd get to do is wave, but you are still sent to preach the good news and heal the sick. Jesus sent us with his identity, and so is yours. When you are anchored in God's unchanging character, it is a game changer because no matter where you are, you are still sent. This is um, Grace. She's a La Fe leader at Chico State University in California. And um, this is her story about how God is still sending her, even though she's participating in the shutdown, just like the rest of us, to share about Jesus. And this all happens on Snapchat. Um, she starts, it kind of happened out of the blue. Our staff told us to think about someone we'd like to pray about and find a way to let them know that we're Christians and ask them if there's anything we can pray for them for. And so that same day, she thought of somebody, not this person, but she thought of somebody and um, she went on, she prayed for them. It was good. And later that day, a friend, Jerry, who had never shown any sign of faith before, he snapped, pray for me. And then a few hours later, he snapped again. I would like continuous prayer, which made Grace take notice. It seemed a little more urgent. He hadn't been on her radar before, but she thought, maybe he's on God's radar. So she snapped, I'm praying for you. I mean, we've all done that, right? Just kind of quick praying, little bit, little hands. 24 hours later, Jesus, I mean, Jerry posted a picture of Jesus on the cross. And he said, thanks to this man here, my mom was saved. He works miracles, which made Grace 
go, whoa, I got to say something on this one. So she messages them, hey, I've been praying. I'm a Christian and I believe in Jesus. At which point Jerry sends her a voice message telling this whole story. His mom had been diagnosed with COVID when he posted the first snap and it wasn't looking good when he posted the second. The doctors had begun to treat her and things were looking bad. But 24 hours later, he was she was completely healed. And Jerry told Grace, he's like, I know this was God. I know God is doing something. So Grace responds, wow, praise Jesus. Prayers have power. Thank you for sharing. I'll continue praying. Still on snap. And then she goes the extra distance and she says, also, I have it on my heart to tell you, we do serve a living God, one that hears you, feels, and sees you. God loves you and your mom too. What I love about her story is that we can, any of us could do that. <laughs> we just, we could live that way. That's totally within the bounds for any of us. She was asking God to give her opportunities to reach out. We can do that. She was asking, who are you sending me to? And then listening and paying attention. We can do that. And she knew that she was sent, even though she's at home and not on campus anymore. I also love the sweet combination she has with sensitivity and boldness. Sometimes we think that if you need to share about Jesus, you can't do it when people are hurting. You have to wait or something. But they do go together. On the cross, Jesus, joy, and grief came together. We're not brushing over people's grief by bringing them good news or we're trying to fix it even. Grief is the appropriate remote, it, grief is the appropriate emotion for the time that we're in. We don't wanna let go of that. Empathy is critical. We should all grow in it in this time. And entering, entering into people's pain and suffering in this time is legitimate. Like this is the time to do that. So when you're an anchored in God's unchanging character, you can be full of great grief and inexplicable joy. You can joyfully share good news. You can boldly pray for healing without running over people's feelings. And we're sent like Jesus, so then we can embody the good news too, and we can carry their griefs and joys. We can expose and fight, fight evil in our time. We can work against violence and injustice, and we can do it with the good news of Jesus. When we're sent in this way, we're clearing the path for revival. We work and we battle and we fight injustice, but we also sing songs of life and leave flourishing in our wake as friend after friend and family member after family member is brought back to life in Christ to join in God's work of restoring our world. So we are sent with good news into a messed up world and it's way more than we can handle. We must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Tonight, especially this week, we are painfully aware of how deeply messed up the world is. We see it on our news feeds and feel it in our bodies. Some of us can't even, can't even sit up. It's too much to bear. But the world has always been that way. The world was always going to fall apart. Lin-Manuel Miranda says, empires rise and empires fall. Everything we put our trust in will fall apart. Social constructs, they were always tenuous at best. Education, work, productivity, success, they were always flimsy. They were never as solid as they seemed and never worth pursuing in that, in just to the degree that we do. We're discovering that many things we put our trust in it are not as for sure as we thought. And our own ability to fight injustice and shape our world is running dry. We are tired and we are wounded and we're crushed by the grind. It's just too much but Jesus is unchanging. Jesus is solid. Anchor yourself to him. Like the old song says, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Be filled with the unchanging one who was at the beginning, still is, and will continue to be the sent one. Jesus. Have you fully put your trust in Jesus? In a minute, I'm going to make space for you to make this decision for yourself. So I'm wondering where you've been at. Maybe you've been following along with Jesus. You've been watching, curious, but arm's length. And maybe before COVID, you had just started looking into Jesus and seeking answers and getting to know some of the people who follow him. 
Maybe you've been more on the skeptical end of things, but now that the world around you is crumbling, your foundational assumptions are shaken. And maybe you're just tired and your usual coping mechanisms just aren't enough to cope with the great grief and disappointment and despair and you're crushed. Make Christ your anchor. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. It was Jesus' joy to be sent into the world to die for us, to die for you. He took on himself all the pain and suffering and brokenness of the world, and he died, defeating it all. And the good news is that the one who beat death in the past is beating death today. Jesus is raised to life, and you're invited to anchor your life in that risen life, the unshakable one, the one who's the same all the time. You're invited to be filled with the Holy Spirit and sent into the world with good news and healing. And if you know right now that you want to make a decision to follow Jesus tonight, either for the first time or as a recommitment, I want to invite you to say yes to a relationship with Jesus right now. And I'm going to pray for you if you want to make that decision in just a moment. And if you know that's you, if when I was talking about feeling crushed and you're ready to put your trust in Jesus or you're tired or you've been skeptical, but now you're looking for something a lot less shakable, um, I want to have you put your name in the chat that you're making this decision so I can pray with you. I also want to encourage you if you're making this decision to text a friend that you know this decision would mean something to it's a big deal to make this decision and not just to you. It says all of heaven will party with you when God's children are reunited to him. And God's been waiting for you, longing for you, looking for you. And then you have these friends who are like Grace who've been praying for you as you consider this decision. They've seen it coming and they've been praying alongside you and walking with you in your questions. Text them, let them know, bring them into this moment. For me, it was the end of my sophomore year of college that I first surrendered my life to Jesus. My life's never been the same since. So if you're making this decision right now, you can pray this prayer with me in your own heart, wherever you are. I come to you, God, needing healing and forgiveness. I thank you, God, that you sent your son on my behalf. I confess that I've put my trust in many other things beside you. I wanna anchor my life in you alone in your unchangingness. I believe that what you did on the cross was for me in my brokenness. Thank you for offering me new life. Your word says that when we believe in you, we can receive your spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. That is a moment we're celebrating. And I know we're um, just online, but I'm really excited for you. And if you just made that decision to follow Jesus, whether a first time or a recommitment, there is a link in the chat that I wanna encourage you. You can go to that right away. And we have um, some friends there who would love to speak with you and affirm that and be, be in person with you as much as we can be and uh, help you on next steps. Um, I also have an invitation for those of you who already follow Jesus. We wanna be people who don't just hear the word. We, we just, we also want to live it out. And you already know that Jesus sent you to share the good news and heal the sick. So my invitation for you is to make a commitment to share your faith with someone specific or pray for someone who you know is sick, either from your campus or in your family, a neighbor, Snapchat, Zoom, it doesn't matter. But if you have someone that's coming to your mind that you want to make a commitment to pray for, I'm going to have you pray with me right now. Holy Spirit, I know you've sent me to preach the gospel and heal the sick. Here I am, Lord, send me again. I want to be a part of your movement in this world, reviving, bringing joy and making things new. Fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit, with boldness and courage and love. Amen. So I'm going to ask you, if you pray that with me too, to respond in the chat, if you know who God is sending you to, or if... Um, you are just committing to ha have God send you at all. And wherever you are, I just want you to remember you are sent by the unchanging one. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Cool. I'm on the
the screen right now. I uh, awesome, yay, Sari. <laughs> um, I think we're yes. Yeah, so we're we're gonna move into a time of musical worship. <laughs> Sorry, that was just really funny. It is a joyful experience when you make a decision to follow the Lord, and it is a joyful experience. When you say yes to being sent, all right? So we're going to move into a time of musical worship. And if you made a decision to follow Jesus for the first time, go to that breakout room right now so that we can support you. And as uh, the rest of us are here and are worshiping, I would love for you to worship God as you contemplate how he has sent you. So we 
On the cross, joy and grief come together. I love how Serene reminded us that in Hebrews it said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus' greatest joy was to take on our pain, our suffering, and all of our death, past, present, and future. And because he rose from the dead, we are free and we are sent to embody this good news to the people around us. If you made a first time decision to follow Jesus, I want to remind you to head over to that breakout room right now. Following Jesus is not a solo experience. We are meant to live out our faith in community and we want to help you to do that. We have two awesome people who are on staff with InterVarsity, Doug and Jamie, and they wanna help you with practical next steps in your journey with Christ. So make sure to head to that breakout room right now. And remember that we also have breakouts for our alumni and to receive prayer. All of those can be found in our show notes. Next week, we'll be taking a break, but we'll be back on May 22nd. On May 22nd, InterVarsity Live is launching a new three-week series called Look What I Can Do. We will be spotlighting the ways God has gifted you and me and how he might be calling us to use our gifts to bring his revival, his new life to the people around us. So make sure you join us again on May 22nd. And also visit us over on our YouTube page to rewatch any of our past shows and worship sets. I also wanted to share with you all that this is my final evening and seeing InterVarsity Live. I have loved serving as your MC. It has been such a joy for me to walk with you all during this difficult season of distance. I have been so encouraged by the deep love you have for one another and the deep love that you have for God and the way that many of you are taking risks to share the love of Christ with those who don't know the good news yet. I'm sure I'll be popping up here and there in the future to say hello, and I'm very excited about how God is going to continue to meet us for InterVarsity Live. So make sure you tune back in on May 22nd. Once again, we are so grateful that you joined us for another InterVarsity Live. Please make sure to fill out the ministry response. There's a couple of new questions this week, and really it's designed to help you process this experience with the Lord. So it will pop up on your screen after I sign off. And once again this week, if you fill out the response, you will receive a free copy of this week's single from the worship team. 
Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening.